Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I want to be teaching you how to make a Minecraft 1.17.1 server. We're going to start off by showing you how to set the server up and then we're going to show you how to allow your friends to join that server once it is set up. We're going to be going through all of it in this video. First of all, though, I want to tell you some things that you can't do with this server. One, this is not a public server. It really is just for your friends, your family, people that you invi invite over to your house. The reason for that is because this server is hosted on your own IP address and with that IP address, people can find out everything from, you know, your city to town, state, even down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, right? And on top of that, they can also DDoS you. And what that means is they can take and hit your internet and basically make it lag and honestly take it offline and make it unusable if you host your server and kind of put this IP out everywhere, right? Giving it to people you trust, that's probably okay. But other than that, you want to make sure that it's not public, right? It's not meant for anybody and everybody. On top of that, this server is hosted on your own computer. What that means is that it's going to basically need decent hardware. You're going to need a sixth generation Intel CPU or a modern Ryzen CPU to be able to run Minecraft servers and play Minecraft at the same time. On top of that, you're going to need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM to be able to run Minecraft and play your Minecraft server on the same computer. So you're going to need really, really good specs there. And on top of all that, you have to worry about everything from security of the server to, you know, hosting the server to if you have any issues, you have to figure them out yourself. You don't have anyone to go rely on with that. It's all kind of on you when you host a server using the method that we're going to outline through the majority of this video. However, we do have a solution, and that solution is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, and at Apex, you don't have to worry about security. You don't have to worry about DDoS because they have DDoS protection. They take care of the security. You don't have to worry about hardware. Apex hosts the server on their own hardware, meaning all you have to do is join the server. Apex worries about the lag. Apex worries about the issues. Speaking of any issues, if you do have issues, Apex has 24 hours, seven day a week support that you can reach out to at any time to get help. So if you do need help, you do have any you know questions or anything about your server, Apex has a support agent there for you to help you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And last but not least, you can also add plugins super easy to an Apex server. You want to add mods to a server, you can do that at Apex. You want to host a mod pack server, well there are over 150 mod packs with one click installation at Apex Minecraft Hosting. So overall, crazy amount of value at Apex and it is the way to host a server if you ask me. It's meant to be up all the time 24 hours a day seven days a week it's meant to be public it's meant to be private you get to choose do you want your server private do you want it public you can choose that very easily at apex and guess what it's on their hardware and they make sure it is going to be lag free and amazing for you when you play on your server so you can check out apex at the first link down below the breakdown to xyz slash apex thanks to them for sponsoring this video nevertheless let's go ahead and assume you don't want to get a server with apex you want to host your own server locally you've got the hardware for it you've got the internet for it you are good to go well let's go ahead and do it the first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below and that's going to take you here this is the basically text tutorial that we have that to how to make a Minecraft server, right? It's going to go through everything from downloading it to setting it up. All of it is kind of covered here. Not kind of, all of it is covered here. We're going to go through all of this in this video as well, but we like to have the text tutorial. That way you can do it kind of at your own pace, right? Sometimes we go too fast in the videos, so on and so forth. Well, then this is here for you if, you know, you need to go at your own pace, which I completely understand. Once you're here though, scroll down and click on this download Minecraft button. That's going to take us off to the Minecraft Java Edition server download. If you do get this like kind of pop up here, just go ahead and click no. <laughs> I guess you, you can participate in that if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and click no there. Once you're here, we then want to go ahead and click on this download Minecraft underscore server 1.17.1.jar, right? So we want to go ahead and click on this green download link here. When we click on that, it's going to go ahead and download server.jar in the bottom left. And that is on Google Chrome. On Mozilla Firefox, it'll download in the center of your screen. On Google Chrome, we'll need to keep it in the bottom left. And on Mozilla Firefox, you'll need to save it in the center of your screen. Now, at this point, we want to go ahead and minimize our browser. And here on our desktop, we do have the server.jar. If this is on your desktop, it's going to be found in your downloads folder. To find that, click the little Windows icons in the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen. Click on that little Windows icon in the top of bottom left of your screen. Go ahead and type in downloads. Have this downloads file folder here. Click on that, and in here you will find the server.jar. Drag this to your desktop just for ease of use. Now, if your jar file looks different than mine, I'm going to show you how to fix that, right? So you actually, in this case, do need your server file to look like this. Now, yours not, might not say server.jar. It might just say server. That's the case, that's okay, but your logo needs to be like mine here. How do you fix that? Well, in that case, you need to go to the description down below and go here. You need to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. Now, this is also going to fix a JNI error. If you do have a JNI error when you try to start your server, this is going to fix that as well. It's a super easy three-step tutorial, and we do have this tutorial up here in video form if you would like. You need this again if this file does not look like mine. If it's not this Coffee Cup logo, you need this. Now, you may actually run 
run this and it still may not work, right? You may actually go through, set up this, and the logo still may not change. That can happen if WinRAR is taking control of the file you downloaded, for example. If that's the case, you need to run the jar fix as well. Don't just run the jar fix. Download Java, right? And run the jar fix. By doing that, you're gonna guarantee it's gonna work. So once you're here, go ahead and go through and run the jar fix. Quick and easy, three steps. It's literally download it, right? Like download and install Java, which you've already done. Download the jar fix, run the jar fix, done. <laughs> right, it's that simple. And uh, just download the jar fix, run that. And then finally, your file will look correct here. That's pretty important because if you don't do that, it's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work correctly. So let's go ahead, right click, create a new folder. Once you've got the correct Java file there, you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com. So we're going to name it that. Why did I name it that? Because that's our own 1.17 grief protected survival server. If you want a simple, amazing survival server or skybox server to play on, come play this at play.breakdowncraft.com. It's 1.17. You will love it. Now let's go ahead and drag and drop the server.jar into the play.breakdowncraft.com profile or not profile folder here. Go ahead and drag and drop that into the folder open up this folder here, and then double click on the server file. And when you do this, because you've already set up Java, you've confirmed Java's gonna work, you've ran the jar fix, all of that's good, it should go ahead and load in everything we need here, which is gonna be the server.properties and eula.txt file. If for whatever reason it doesn't do that, and you have your server.jar here, first, restart your computer. That's the first step. Second step is then, if it's still not working, go to the description down below and go through this tutorial. We do have how to fix a broken Minecraft server, and this goes in depth with a bunch of different sort of basically fixes for your Minecraft server, one of which is setting up a run.bat file, which may allow you to start your server if for whatever reason the double clicking here does not work. Nevertheless, we do have this eula.txt file now. Go ahead and open that up with Notepad. And then we want to go to this link here. If you do agree to the eula that's linked there, which we do, we want to change eula equals false to eula equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Make sure there's no spaces, exactly like what we have here, and then go ahead and do File, Save. Now we save the ua.txt file and we can go ahead and double click on server.jar. At this point, your Minecraft server is actually going to start up. And unfortunately, my computer lags whenever it starts a Minecraft server. So I'm going to do a quick jump cut until this server is up and running. See you when it is. There we go. The server is now started. It will open up this kind of GUI. I do apologize for the jump cuts. I hate it, but a lot of computer parts and things are on back order right now. We, we've got a new one on the way, but it's taking some time to get the uh, stuff together to uh, get it built. So I apologize for that. But we do have this now started. Now, at this point, we can actually go ahead and join our server. Now, your friends cannot join at this point, but I'm going to show you how you will join your server. And this is just a test to make sure it works. If you can join your server this way, but your friends can't join your server, most likely the issue later on is going to be with your port forward, something like that. So anyway, let's go ahead and see if you can join your server. To do that, we're going to go ahead and click the little Windows icons on the top left of my screen, probably in the bottom left of your screen. I've already went through this. Then we want to type in CMD here. So CMD, we have command prompt here. Go ahead and click on that. And then in the command prompt, what you want to do is type IPCONFIG. IPCONFIG. IP config, all one word, exactly like that, and hit enter. That's then going to go ahead and give us a bunch of information here, and we need two numbers from this list. So let's go ahead and open up Notepad. Right, so we're going to open up Notepad here, and then in Notepad, what we want to go ahead and do is copy over two numbers. Like I said, the IPv4 address is one of them. So IPv4 address, and that's going to be 192.168.1.123 for me. For you, it's probably a different number. That's why we're getting it this way and copying over, because yours is probably different from mine. Then we're going to go ahead and space down. We also need our default gateway. Now, the default gateway could have two sort of strings of numbers there. So default gateway. Now, if you do have two numbers, they're going to be over, one's going to be under another, right? So on the first line, for example, you may have one that has like numbers and letters and colons in it. It's going to be a bigger, longer string. And then under that, you're going to have a shorter string similar to mine that's just numbers. You want the one that's just numbers. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.1. And again, you may have two. If you do, go ahead and get the one that's just numbers. Now we can go ahead and close out of command prompt because guess what? These are all the numbers we need. Now I'm going to go ahead ahead and open up Minecraft 1.17 and I will meet you on the Minecraft 1, or sorry, excuse me, 1.17.1. I'm going to be opening up Minecraft 1.17.1 latest release here and I will meet you on the Minecraft main menu. Our server is still live. All right, so as you can see, Minecraft is open and our server is also open as you can see. So we got the server open and Minecraft open. Now I want to go ahead and click on multiplayer. Once we click on multiplayer, we want to go ahead and click direct connection and then we want to type in our IPv4 address. So if we pull this up over here really fast, we'll be able to copy our IPv4 address here and paste it into the server address. Now, for me, this is going to work. This is going to log us into the server and you should be able to log in using your IPv4 address as well. 
Well, I should say that, but 99% of the time, you should be able to log in using your IPv4 address. But for some of you, you will actually need to use your default gateway. Now, what's interesting here is both of these will work for me, right? And for most of you as well. So that was my IPv4 address. It joined the server. You can see Nick King has joined. Go ahead and join the server with the IPv or the default gateway. That's going to work as well. See, the default gateway also allows to join. Now, you're the only person that can join your server this way, right? Your friends, your family, anyone else who's playing on your server, they will need to join via your public IP address. But for you, you will always join via your local IP just to make things easier, right? You can try to join via your public IP, but it might work, not work. However, this will always work. Your local IP address will always work. If it doesn't, most likely you might have some firewall settings issues and there is a link in the description down below for Windows Defender, but most people will be able to join. No problems via their local IP. But that's not what all this tutorial is about. Let's go ahead and close out of Minecraft. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and stop this server. To correctly stop a server over here in this text box, always type stop, S-T-O-P, stop, and then hit enter, right? Then that's going to properly stop the server. If you don't do that, it's not going to stop it properly and it can cause issues. However, what if you want your friends to join, right? That, that's the main reason you're making a Minecraft server is so your friends can join. Well, let's go ahead and jump right on in to how your friends can join your Minecraft server and getting your server set up for them. The first step of port forwarding is going to be to open up your browser and create a brand new tab. Tab. Exactly like this, right? This is a brand new tab with nothing in it. Now, normally up here at the top where you would type in, you know, the breakdown.xyz, youtube.com, breakdowncraft.com, something like that. You want to go ahead and take your default gateway and copy it, right? So copy your default gateway and paste it right up here at the top where, again, normally you would type in a website. Then hit enter. Is it going to take us off to basically a page that most likely looks similar to this, but yours will probably look completely different, and that's okay. The only thing that's going to be like definitely similar, you're going to have some sort of a login box here. So as you can see, we have a login box here. We then want to go ahead and do that. Now we have basically entered our username and password here. Now, what are your username and password? Well, luckily we have an in-depth tutorial, of course, linked in the description down below on how to find your router's username and password. This goes over five different methods that you can go through and start with method one. We'll work your way all the way down through method five and you will be able to get logged in to your router and be able to port forward. So go through the simple steps and you will be good to go. Now, once you've entered in your login info, click sign in or log in or whatever yours says. And again, you will be taken off to a page that looks completely different from what I see here. Here, right now mine's still loading but when it does load it will look completely different for you for what I see for example so as you can see here we have it we have kind of you know my router information all of that stuff yours is going to look completely different from this luckily I'm going to be going over all the common terms and places that you might be able to find port forwarding in your router most importantly though we have this, a complete guide to port forwarding on any router. And it goes through some of the most popular routers today, like Netgear, like AT&T, like Verizon, all of that stuff. It goes through some of the most popular routers out there. However, if your router isn't specifically on that list, still watch it. Most likely you have a router very similar to another router in there. There's really three or four big router companies out there. And most other companies who have their own routers just end up licensing and re kind of, you know, redesigning, if you will, software from other companies. So because of that, you want to go ahead and just watch this, watch through the popular routers, and then you're going to get in your router and be like, this is very similar to Netgear. This is very similar to, you know, a, a, a Asus router. This is very similar to a Linksys router. This is very similar to a Cisco router. All of those are featured in here, including again, like Verizon, at and all those. And so go in here, go through this, and then you'll be able to find it in your router without problems. However, again, I'm going to be giving you kind of like the general terms as we go through here. So for me, on my router, it's in security. For you, it may be an advanced, it may be an advanced advanced, it may be an apps and gaming, it may be in port forwarding, it may be an admin or administration. For example, on Netgear routers, I think it's in the admin tab, and then the advanced tab within the admin tab, and then finally port forwarding. So for me, it is in security, and then it is in apps and gaming. I've also, by the way, seen this in the firewall section, just so you know. So for me, it is in again security, then apps and gaming, and then single port forwarding, right? So overall, we're looking for port forwarding or port forwarding slash port triggering. It could also be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, or NAT triggering, NAT triggering, so that it could also be what it is. So once you're there, for me, I have to click add a new single port forward. You may just have a big list, right? Like so, if you do, just enter in the first one, save it when you're done, all that stuff. But for me, I have to add a new port forward. Now for the application name or ID, that's going to be Minecraft. It's basically saying, what is this for? Well, it's for Minecraft or Minecraft server. Either one is fine. For external port, internal port, anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, port, anything involving the word port, you're going to enter in 25565. So external port, hey, we're port 25565. Internal port, oh, there's the word port again, 25565. Now for protocol, it needs to either be both 
or it needs to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP. Either way, both of these need to be selected. Now, again, if you don't have both, what you want to do is just copy all of these settings and then do one of these for UDP and one of these for TCP. However, I do have the option, and most of you will as well, to select both. For device IP, we want to go ahead and then do whatever our IPv4 address is. So for me, that's 192.168.1, and then if we come over here, that's going to be .123. All right, so that's what mine is. Yours may be completely different, and that's okay. You may not even have a device IP. You may just have a device drop-down box. And if that's the case, click on that and select your device that you're starting your server on from that drop-down box. Now, at this point, you may have one more box left. Most of you probably won't, but some routers do require an external or outside IP for their port forward, right? So for those of you who have that, I'm gonna show you how to get it. For those of you that don't, listen up, you still need this IP address because it's the IP address that your friends are gonna join and it's your public IP address. Which you can find again linked in the description down below. So here it is. This is our What's My IP Address page and it's just gonna give you your IP address right here. Now all you can see on my screen is the 100 at the end. Why is that? Because as I said at the beginning of this video, this is only meant for people you trust and well, anyone on the internet can watch this video and I don't trust everyone on the internet and neither should you. So nevertheless, we can only see the 100 there but for you, you're gonna see your entire IP address. Go ahead and copy that. You can also see your county, region, city. Again, all that's blacked out, but it is there, right, if you do want, you know, kind of proof that this is going to be able to get, you know, all this information about you, there's where you can get it from. So now we're going to go ahead and go back to our port forward, enter in that IP if we need it. I don't. Most of you probably won't, but if you do, enter it in there. Then go ahead and save, apply, you know, make the port forward active, if you will. And then finally, we can go ahead and minimize our browser. Now, what we want to do is go ahead and again, double click on the server.jar. We also want to go ahead and open up Minecraft. So I'm going to go ahead and quick, do a quick jump cut to when this server is open and I'm in Minecraft. All right. So as we can see here, we do have Minecraft 1.17.1 open. We also have our server open over here, and this is a 1.17.1 server, right? So we have both of these open. Now we can click on multiplayer, direct connection, and then we're going to post or paste our public IP address in here, right? So I can just go ahead, paste a public IP address in here. And again, you can only see 100 at the end. Now I can join the server via my public IP, but you may not be able to join it via yours, right? You're, you might not be able to join your own server via your public IP. That's okay. The only people who need to join your public, your server via your public IP is your friends, right? Your friends, people who aren't in your own household need to join your server with your public IP. You can join it off of the IPv4 address we found earlier. If I click join server here though, it's going to go ahead and launch us on in signifying that our port forward is correct. Everything is good to go. We are set up. Now, if you do have any issues, for whatever reason, your friends can't join you off of your public IP address. It's most likely an issue with your port forward, right? So it could be that. Double check all that. Make sure it's all correct. Make sure you have UDP and TCP. All of that stuff is good. Then it could be an issue with a firewall on your router. So it's very, very possible that your router has its own firewalls and you need to make sure that it doesn't block all ports with those firewalls. Our tutorial, for example, the complete guide to port forwarding on any router, that goes over some of that in that. But most people, most people who have an issue actually have the issue with Windows Defender. So in the description down below, we have this. And this is how to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall, right? And it goes over everything. It's up to almost 100,000 people at this point. Get Windows Defender linked back to, or not linked back, but get Windows Defender to allow Minecraft. So as you can see in here, Minecraft has a check next to it. Yours may not have a check next to it. And this video shows you how to do it. And do it in such a way that's not going to, you know, mess anything else up. It's just going to work, right? So that is how you can do that. That's how you can get that set up. We also, again, do have in the description down below this guide. And it is, it it is 21 minutes long, but it is well worth it, right? It goes through how to add RAM to your servers. It goes over how to do so many different things on your servers. It even talks about paper servers, plugins, mods, all of that stuff. It goes through all of that in depth, and it's very, very much so worth watching. I know it's a big one, but it's going to basically get in front of any issues you may have with your server. And if you do have an issue, it probably answers it. It's all the common issues that we see on Minecraft servers. Having helped millions of people start servers, we do end up seeing a lot of issues again and again. I try to correct most of those in this video. For example, Java, which we went over earlier is one of those that I correct in the video, but it all goes in depth with this right here. So go check that out, watch it, get it set up, and then you'll be good to go. So nevertheless, speaking of getting it set up, congratulations. You have now set up and know how to make a Minecraft 1.17.1 server. If you have any questions about Minecraft 1.17.1 servers, let us know in the comment section down below. And if you do want to support the channel, please go check out Apex at the first link down below and purchase your server through there. We do get a little commission for that at no additional cost for you. And uh, yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Apex is amazing. We host our own server, played our breakdowncraft.com on them. And if you want to play on an awesome, 
survival Minecraft server or Skyblock Minecraft server, come play this at play.breakdowncraft.com. Nevertheless, my name is Nick, this baby zombie's probably gonna end up killing me, and I'm out. Peace.